everybody! Welcome to the other side of my office today. Uh, the reason that I'm over here is because I thought it would be really fun to show you my Pride and Prejudice collection. I have, you know, honestly have not counted in a while <laughs> how many actual Pride and Prejudice copies I own. So we will find out today. Yay! Okay, so we're gonna start with this one, which is the one I just featured on Instagram, and it is the one I just got, which is why it was sitting there, because it doesn't have a proper place yet. It is beautiful, so that's another reason. I just wanted to look at it <laughs> a lot. And it's a Seek and Find classic. I got it at Barnes & Noble. I was, I had promised my daughter, if she got out of bed and didn't whine about it for school, that after school I would take her to the bookstore and buy her a book. And I did. I bought her several. And I bought myself this one because it's amazing. <laughs> so you have to seek and find all these different characters in each of the settings. So this is the Meryton Assembly. And then we visit Netherfield Hall and go on to dinner with Mr. Collins. I have a page stuck together here. Oh, here we go. The trip into Maryton, the Grand Netherfield Ball, proposal for Mr. Collins, uh, the trip to London, the visit to Hunsford, the holiday in Derbyshire, visit to Pemberley, the search for Lydia. This is nice, it's on the beach. And the colors are beautiful. The unexpected visitors, the wedding. I don't wanna give anything away. Turn away now. Look how pretty. Um, this is adorable and I'm really excited. I hope that I hope that Maddie enjoys this because I sure am. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna have to play with this one tonight and see finally. I haven't I haven't read this one to her yet because we were busy reading her other books. Alright. I'm just gonna start this way and work my way around to everything. So uh, the first thing I will show you is not a book but these adorable stickers that are everything. I love them so much. I actually have them also in bookmarks. And I don't know if the shop is even open anymore, but I'm glad I got their stuff before they disappeared, if they disappeared. I haven't checked in a while. So they sit there on, now this I'm not gonna take down. I guess I could turn the camera Let's see if I can turn the camera for this. Oh, there we go. All right. This is actually has a cutout of the characters behind it. Um, the one inside this. And it has um, like the entire, the entire book written really, really, really tiny uh, in here. And then I added this over top of it because this is one of our 11 by 17 nerdy post prints that we did and I, I love it and I needed it to be somewhere in my, in my uh, section over here for Pride and Prejudice but I didn't actually have a spot for it. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to go ahead and add it to that one and make it kind of my own print. I also have a print up there, right up there that is, um, cover of one of the books that you'll see and it was actually let me adjust this so I don't have to hold it anymore it was actually printed and given to me by my friends and co-workers uh from my job that I quit before I started Nerdy Post um and so they they, they all signed it and because I told them if they gave me a, a picture of the building in which we worked which is what they normally do I would throw it away <laughs> Not because I didn't love them, but because I didn't want a picture of it. So they did that instead, and I kept it, and it's nice. So <laughs> anyway, um, okay, the first book is this beautiful copy, and I actually have the entire set. My husband gave it to me for Christmas um, last year, but the rest of the set lives in my... I have this little section in another room that's like vintage books, and they all live on that... On that um, they're sitting on an, an, an old um, sewing machine. So like it has like a table and then you flip it and it becomes a sewing machine. It's really cool. So they live there. Um, I, I, I haven't read this one yet. It is beautiful though. And I love the, it has some illustrations in it. 
Um, I love the weight, the size, everything about it is just beautiful. Yeah, it's a lovely copy. It is, maybe I need to do this. That would probably be wise. Montlake Romance Heirloom Collection Edition 2012. I think that will help you figure out how to get it if you want it. I'll try and do that with all of them. Okay, the next one is this copy. Uh, Penguin, this is one that I got when I was in London or Dublin, I can't remember now. Dublin, that's where it was. I, I found this one and it's really nice. I have not read it yet. No pictures or anything. It's Penguin English Library. I think that should be enough to help you. Okay, the next one is the Word Cloud Classics. And this is Leatherbound. It is from, it is Word Cloud Classics. Look at the pretty, I should show you all the pretty end papers too because they're, all, they're usually lovely. Yep, Word Cloud Classics. So that's where you can find this one. And then it's got a nice quote on the back too. Um, next is one of my original copies that I got. I, I liked this one better than the one that I originally got and you'll see it in a little bit. Um, I thought the girls were really pretty. Usually they kind of make them not so pretty, but like just because it was older times doesn't mean there weren't pretty girls too. So I don't know. It annoys me, but I like these. They, they look nice. They don't look all frumpy and weird. That sounds bad, but just my opinion. It's Penguin Classics. I got it at Barnes & Noble. I read it December 2008. I made a little note. And that's about all that's interesting about that one. The next one I think I got for Christmas from one of my friends. It is Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. And I love this black and white very fancy and then there's like a oh yeah you see it shiny um it has a little flap it goes I, i'm assuming those are the sisters these don't technically have end papers but they do have they do have this yeah penguin books you'll find it that way i guess next one is whew, i can't remember oh um, my friend Michelle found this one for me and this is one of my earlier copies that I was given. Oh, she has the shipping manifest in here from a book. So it was probably a little bit harder to find. Um, this is beautiful. I don't know if you can see the detail on here. I'm trying to do it. Here we go. There you go. That's what the spine looks like. It's beautiful. Um, no pretty end papers on this one. It is... Published 1946, edition 292. Um, the Zodiac Press, London. That's all I can tell you about that. Published by Chateau and Windus, London. Oxford University Press, Toronto. Hopefully that helps. Ah, next are the Boddington, I believe, copies and their penguin again this is what it looks like without the pretty and and papers are green penguin classics but i do believe they're boddingtons this is the one that matches the print up there that my co-workers did i love this one so much i think it is so pretty that like watercolor thing about it the spine is pink the back um the end paper looks like this it says you must allow me to tell you how ardently i admire and love you this is by splinter new york an imprint of Sterling Publishing. Splinter. Um, the next one I have actually read. I have seen a different copy of this. 
it's I want to say the same books but I think it might be like a paperback version that has like purple leaves or something going on on this side instead but um, I I'm not sure what happened I think it came like this it was one that one of my friends had found um, or something actually happened when I read it it was December 2012 when I read it this is the end paper I really like the weight of this and I love the color because I love gray I don't know if you can tell by my walls I like gray because I think color looks really pretty on it anyway next we have penguin drop clack drop penguin drop caps and I got this one I actually got this one in the UK um, I wish I had this entire series of drop cap books only because I feel like as a letter I should own them but I have yet to get any more than this one so birthday or Christmas ideas anybody uh, this is also penguin books they know how to take my money <laughs> and yeah uh, the next one I got at, did I get it? My sister got this one for me, I think. Um, I love just the, in, the like excessive use of, of flourishes on this um, because it reminds me of me and I like to use flourishes a lot. I have not read this one. This one is also Splinter Publications, so. This one I got at a, um, it was like a, what are those places called? It was an antique place. That's what it was. It was an antique place. And I just really loved this cover. It was so vintage and kind of terrible, but awesome at the same time. It's just one of those weird ones where I like it, but I don't like it. Um, potentially the color, but, uh, <laughs> it is the school edition, literary heritage, a Macmillan paperback series um and what I do love about this book is the aging that is, has occurred on the pages this is one of my favorite things about books is where you can see their age as they go they get they get lighter so this is probably the real page color but um smells good too so yeah this one is kind of a fun one kind of an ugly one but um but I like it. It looks nice on the shelf. Uh, the next one I got at Books A Million. I think I got it or I asked for it and got it for a uh, birthday or Christmas. One of the two, but I think it's really, really pretty. No, I know. I didn't get this one. I know what happened. Never mind. I got this one from my friend, Laura. It was a Canadian version and she got it and sent it to me. That's what happened. Sorry, there's a lot. I get them confused. <laughs> but yes, this one. And I love it. Okay. Pretty sure I bought this one. Um, first of all, it has yellow, which is one of my favorite colors. Second of all, um, it has a peacock on it. Again, I love anything with birds, so that helps. I don't know if you can tell by the art behind me that I like birds. Um... I think it's really fun because it's a really different kind of look. This is Scholastic Classics. Um, I believe this is UK and I believe I got it, yes, um, on Book Depository. Haven't read it yet, but I do know how the story goes, so there's that. This one I got from Books A Million. Now I don't know if I bought it or if I put it on my Christmas list and someone else got it for me but mm, but I think I actually bought this one myself yeah because I was impatient and I didn't want to wait um I think it's really pretty I don't normally like the people in dresses on covers but there's no head which is nice and I really like the spine on this one some covers I don't have and never will get because I just don't think they're cool or pretty. But um, but some I kind of have this like uh, um, but some I actually really like and even though they're maybe not like the prettiest, they still have something about them that I, I want to collect them. So um, I'm a weird collector. <laughs> like I collect. 
I've got Stranger Things going on, so not conducive with my Pride and Prejudice, Prejudice theme, but um, for example, my Stranger Things Funkos. I refuse to get Barb because I don't like her, so I don't have her in the collection. Uh, so I don't have the full collection, but I don't really care because I don't like Barb. Okay, back to Pride and Prejudice. This next one is, I don't even remember where I got it. It's beautiful. It is like a cloth cover. It is from Race Point Publishing, a quarto imprint. I really like that it has this band. I think that's kind of fun. Oh, the last one, by the way, is a Sweetwater Press uh, book, in case you can't get it off of um, Books A Million. Okay, now I'm starting to get into some of this stuff. I'm gonna have to move, so I'll just show you. This is my amazing flag set from, um, I knew that was gonna happen. Ugh. Okay, this is my amazing flag set from, <laughs> dang it, Ugh. from Girl of All Work. And I, I have to hold them all. They are adorable and the last, time I read this book, I used them. Or read, yes. So one of these books actually has the little heads poking out from from wherever I was. I, I, I always like to make note of my favorite quotes in every book that I read, <laughs> um, but I also find it's it's really fun to see what what hits me each year enough to, to, to underline it or flag it. Um, sometimes every time I'll, I'll do a certain quote and then sometimes that one won't interest me that year and uh, something else will. So it's, it's really kind of fun to see just, you know, the mood I was in when I read the book. So, um, then I have this amazing Mr. Darcy necklace. I love this chain and his, he's, he's amazing. You'll see if I can get it to focus. Okay, hopefully you can see that. I got this as part of the Kickstarter support um, for the um, novelty tins that I'll show you as we get around to it. And I, I, I adore it. I never wear it because I, I don't wanna lose it or break it or scuff it or anything, especially with Maddie being around. Maybe when she gets a little bit older and I, I don't have to worry her about her like wanting to pull it off of me, I'll wear it, so. <laughs> um, so I got this bookmark from Sweet Sequels. Love me some Sweet Sequels. And it's all her different Pride and Prejudice designs on a single bookmark and I love it. I literally just got it, so I haven't used it yet, but I'm totally using it this year. I got this amazing mug from again from my friend Laura in Canada and I love her so thank you for this. I have something inside it. It's part of a necklace that broke. It's the it's a it says Pride and Prejudice. It's a book cover on it but it was a locket and the top part just kind of fell off. So now it's in there. Um let me move all this actually. No, it's fine. Okay, so now I can reach the rest of these. So this one is actually a manga classic. And I, I really love this. I actually uh, was so busy a couple Christmases ago that I chose to read this one instead of like the regular one because I could read it a lot faster. And I really like it. It was it was really neat. It was really fun. And um, yeah, it was it was lovely actually. I love the illustrations. <sighs> anyway, I enjoyed this one a lot. So, got it at Barnes and Noble, probably easy to find. The next one was a book depository buy. This was one of those that somebody designed themselves, themselves and um, 
really pretty and it's got kind of like a overlay thing happening with Darcy and Elizabeth and then like a peacock and I really liked it. I uh, have not read this version. All I can say about it is that it's, you can find it on Book Depository. Illustrated by Charles Edmund Brock. Hopefully that helps. Um, next is, okay, so this book was actually part of, I think like a lit queue forever ago. And I missed the lit queue, but saw it and they said you can buy it on Amazon. So somebody designed it themselves again. And Dreamcatcher Books. You can still find it. I got this one from for Christmas for my sister, I think. And I, I think it's really, really pretty. The only thing that I have trouble with this, with this one is it was misprinted, I think, because you'll notice <clears throat> that it has like a gradient and, and it looks like the printer was almost out of ink up here. And you can see it on the back too. It, I don't think that gradient was meant to happen only because, only because it also affects the blue up here. So that's, that's my one fault with this one, but I really do love this book. I think it's so pretty. So the design itself was well done. Next we have, uh, the book that has all the heads in it. These are all of my girl of all work, um, bookmarks <laughs> and I have a ton. This, this month was the month I was actually working on, um, finding quotes for my classics box. And so I, I used them a ton. Oh my gosh. Apparently I also can't believe I forgot about these had my Darcy and Elizabeth happy hello magnetic bookmarks in this in this book and I didn't realize it this is one of my favorite books I again birds on the cover and it's yellow so shouldn't be that surprising um this is my penguin cloth bound classic I think that's about all you would need to know to get to it it's definitely been read. <laughs> so um, I'm so happy I found those. That's awesome. Yay. Okay. All right. Now we're getting into like my, it's stacked the other way books. So this is going to kind of potentially be a disaster. Um, let me move this prop out of the way. It's a soap. I think I got this soap in the bookish box, one time box, I think. Um, <laughs> Okay, so that that uh, little piece that was in the mug, I believe came with this. this it was a crafting call. It, the n necklace or whatever it was was maybe might be a keychain. Anyway, it was it was in this. <laughs> I kept this because it was adorable. So this does not count as a book, but it sure looks like one. I also have I also have this. Um, Clever case, Pride and Prejudice. It's beautiful. Obviously not technically counting as a book though, because I'd actually have to put my iPad mini in it and then I would have to download the book to, to let it count, so. But the cover itself is very pretty. Um, <laughs> okay, that doesn't count. to save time. Okay, the next is this tiny little uh, collector's library edition. There's a piece of paper in it which tells me that somebody got it for me. And it was the nice thing about Bookstagram is that people will send you stuff sometimes and they're amazing because Bookstagram's amazing and I've sent things as well. So, uh, dear Alexis, I hope this package finds you well. I came across this cute little copy uh, in a small post office in a nearby town. I have never seen this version before, but I thought of you when I noticed it and I thought it was very cute. I've since Googled it and I've discovered there are many different classics available in their collector's library edition. So I'm hopeful you didn't own this one yet. Uh, this is from Ree's Bookshelf. R-I-E-S bookshelf. Um, it was so nice of her. It was a nice little, look how cute the little illustration is. 
And no, I didn't own it. Another tiny one that I got is this lovely little thrift store book find, thrift book, you know, secondhand book store find. Uh, <laughs> it's adorable and I feel like probably, I don't know, 70s maybe? Six, seven? It kind of looks like, I don't know. It doesn't say anywhere. Yeah, it doesn't say anywhere. Um, Illustrated Classics Editions. It's adorable. Okay, the next one we have is uh, a recent find that actually someone else found for me and sent to me. And I actually really love it. Uh, the first time she showed it to me, I was like, oh, that's nice. And then I, it came in and it ended up being way cooler than I thought it was going to be. I just love the colors on this and the illustrations. I mean, look, look how pretty. I don't know. It, it, it's way cooler than, uh, than I thought it was going to be, essentially. Uh, so this one said, I'm so glad this fun retro edition of PNP will have a great home in your collection. I'm a huge admirer of your work and I'm so glad I could send this to you. Take care and keep on being awesome, Laura. Um, this is the Scholastic Campus Classic Edition. And it looks like 1962. So very, very cool find and I'm so glad to have this one in my collection. Next is a, okay. I'm, I found this little charm um, in a pack of like three at Hobby Lobby one day and I decided to, I had a spare bracelet that I didn't like what was on it so I took it off and made this tiny little bracelet and this thing says my good opinion once lost is lost forever so I made my own little jewelry and the book that it was hanging off of <laughs> it's one of my favorites, this. <laughs> How amazing is this? Um, <laughs> lock up your daughters, Darcy's in town. Pulp class, pulp the classics. Um, that is the place to find it. And it's amazing. And I love it so much. <laughs> my friend Michelle got this one for me for Christmas, I believe, or my birthday. I can't remember which one, but bonus points for having painted edges. Next is one of a set that is also not living with this one. It is a cloth bound. It's kind of um, pressed in. I don't know if you can see that. And this is Arcturus Publishing. I wanna say this is Canada. And for the life of me, cannot remember how I got this. I got the whole set. I must have got it online, but I don't remember where. So you're gonna have to kind of search for that one if you're looking for it. I'm gonna move these so I don't knock them over. <sighs> okay. This is one I got a long time ago before I got really picky about covers and what I actually wanted to collect. It has a birdcage on it. It's pretty cute. I like the green. It's not my favorite copy I own. This is a Signet Classics Signet. Signe. Anyway, probably got this at Barnes and Noble at some point. Next is another copy that someone found for me, I believe. And or or I found this in I might have No, I think someone got this one for me. I, either way, <laughs> I really, really, really like this one. It it's so simple, but I love I love the layout of the wording. I thought that was done really nicely. Um, I let's see, Washington Square Press. It is 1964, I think. So if you're looking for it. The next one I did get from someone because I have the little paper in there. Which makes me think I got the other one for myself because otherwise I probably would have kept the paper in there. This copy, which is really pretty, it is a 
Apparently the person who owned it before me was Helen Bennett. Uh, Sinia Classic again. 1961 afterward copyrights. I'm assuming that's about the time that it was done. This one says, I'm happy this amazing edition of Pride and Prejudice will have your awesome PMP collection to keep it company. Enjoy. Oh, this is from Emily Sweet. And I really like it. It's kind of fancy, but also really simple. And I don't know, I just really, I think it's really pretty. Okay, and then, <laughs> surprise, surprise, I liked this one because it has a peacock on it. But I also really liked the pink. And I'm not sure why it had to be yellow on this side because it throws me off, but whatever. I haven't read this version yet. This is a Simon & Schuster Enriched Classic. It was one of the earlier ones that I got when I realized that I disliked the one that I had, which was this one. This was the original copy that I learned to love Pride and, Sh Pride and Prejudice on. It is a Barnes & Noble Classic. It's annotated, which was great for a first reading because I was able to kind of understand some of the words that I didn't understand. And that made it awesome. Apparently I took this on a flight somewhere. <laughs> December 2006 and 2007. So I, I read it the first year and the second year. So probably the second year is when I started uh, collecting these books. I just don't think she's that pretty. I don't know, anyway. She looks grumpy. Then we have this one, which I also got in London, or Dublin. I read this December 2014. It was Dublin. Has this little fun. This is Vintage Classics. Vintage Books, London. So if you're looking for that one. And then I have this big old thing that I do count because it does have Pride and Prejudice in it from Barnes and Noble. I got this one early on as well. I have not read it. Uh, the pages, the gilded pages actually kind of stick together still. Um, I had always intended to and then I found other copies that were a lot easier to carry. So that one is a beast. And that concludes top row. Now we will go to the bottom row. Okay, so I recently got these playing cards in a box, I can't remember which one. Uh, they're really fun, they have different characters on them. They also have different quotes on them, I believe. Yeah. Different quotes and a really pretty backside. I have obviously not used them and I don't keep them out on display other than inside their box because I'm pretty sure Maddie would get a hold of them and then lose half of them. So I try to be a little bit careful with those. Okay, that brings us to, uh, I guess I'll pull this one off the top. Uh, another recent purchase. I couldn't help myself. I got this one when I got Maddie some other um, baby lit books that were missing from her collection. And this is a baby lit storybook. So it's a little bit, it's the step up from the baby lit, which actually I'll just pull out right now so you can see the difference. So this is, this is the baby lit book, which we do our counting primers on. And I go through this story with her. And we really like this page. And we pick out which, which of them is the bad guy, which one doesn't look like the other. So that's really fun. And then we have this version, which is a little bit more about the story itself. <laughs> These are some of the pages. I think it's really cute. It does a pretty good job of explaining. There's a couple things I probably would have changed. Um, either to simplify or elaborate on, but for the most part, it works for her. She'll eventually get the whole story because, I mean, if she sees that I'm obsessed with it, she'll probably at least want to figure out why. So, I like both of these copies. 
decks that was loud. Okay, so then we have a bookmarky bookmark that my sister gave me for Christmas, I think. Or my birthday, I can't remember. It has the little Pride and Prejudice book hanging off the side. Really cute. Um, we have Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. <laughs> I've seen the movie, but I have not read the book. I'm a little skeptical, <laughs> to be honest. But still felt like it should be part of the collection. Just because. Next is a Cozy Classics, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. And these are like made of felt dolls. This is obviously should be Maddie's, but I stole it from her. <laughs> um, honestly, because she was a little bit young for kind of what they were. Now I could probably read it to her. Um, but it goes through the story very, very simply. I mean... Kind of gives different words, just working on words. These are Cozy Classics, Chronicle Kids books. I got this one recently from my friend Michelle for Christmas or birthday. I can't remember which one. And this is probably the weirdest one I own. <laughs> um, it's really funny. Like, it's funny how it was done. But I kind of hate the emoji faces. <laughs> like aesthetically, I don't like them. And it bothers, like they, they should be simpler, I think. I, I don't know, something about them just, just is annoying. But the, how it's written is actually really funny, so. Then I have, ah, uh, then I have this copy. Now this is a special copy because you can't find them anywhere anymore. Um, this was done by, so this was recovering the classics and they use this image all the time because it's, it's a really good, it's one of my favorite designs I've done. Um, the Pride and Prejudice design. I did this cover. This one is the one that I designed and obviously there's a peacock on it because duh. It's yellow again because duh. I actually did, this is some of my early lettering. Um, that I did and then I cleaned it up in um, Illustrator. And you can't really tell because I made it really subtle, but the, um, I'll get it up close enough. There are actually lines from his letter. I wrote his entire letter and they cross over the whole thing, but you can only really see them on the, the darker stuff. It's really light white on the on the yellow, so it's, it's a really subtle thing that's going on there, but it's one of my uh, favorite <laughs> parts, actually. And anyway, I love it. So you can't get these anymore. They don't make them as books anymore. I I even did a back. They don't they didn't have the back on the originals. This is the first one I was sent, and I got one where they misspelled Austin. So I never like to set it this way on the shelf because it annoys me. Um, but still one of the coolest things I've done. And then I have Jane Austen classic coloring, removable coloring plates. I never have time to color, so I've not used it, but it's pretty. I was given that for my friend Michelle, probably for Christmas. Then we have this beauty. It's so a Folio Society, it's one of the original ones. And this again was Michelle. She introduced me to Folio Society and Folio Society is amazing. The books are beautiful. I mean, it, they even come in these amazing little boxes. I usually take the boxes off for most of the books, but I did leave it on for both of my Pride and Prejudice versions. I got this one for Christmas uh, from my friend Jeannie. And I think, I'm pretty sure she got me this one. It's been a while. I have read this one, I think, yes, December 2013. And I really like, it's like a cloth bound 
I really like the colors and the design of this. This is a, um, this is W, let's see. Just keep seeing a W. <laughs> White's Books. And I'm assuming you can find it at whitesbooks.com. At least that'd be a place to start. Okay, after that we have this amazing copy that my sister found for me a couple Christmases ago. And it's so pretty. It's a leather bound. It has an amazing spine. Look at that thing, it's gorgeous. Um, published expressly for the personal library of somebody. Um, it has like this silk, I don't know, you're gonna probably hate this noise, but silk type of um, binding. Silk, um, ah, I forgot the word. <laughs> silk end papers. And it also has some pretty illustrations mixed in. I haven't read this version yet, but I do love it. It's a very, very pretty version. Next, we have kind of, they go together. The Illustrated Pride and Prejudice version. Look at the, in, uh, the, the pages on this. How cool is that? It's so pretty. Um, end papers. You've got like patterns on some of the pages, little designs, then you have your full page spreads. And then when you get to the middle-ish, oh, there's also Darcy's letter. Um, where is the, somewhere in this dang thing, here it is. Okay, when she gets to Pemberley, you see this, and then you can open it, and you get the glory of the entire estate. And it's beautiful, but I can't hold it up because it keeps closing. Then, most recently, I got the paperback version. And it's, it's very similar inside. You still got all of the illustrations and the uh, headings that have like pretty things around it. There is not an, oh, wait, hang on. Yes, there is. They do the same thing in this version as in the other one. So when Maddie gets a little bit older and can enjoy this, she can read this one or this one and I can read the other one and we can read them together. That'll be fun. At least I think it will be. She might not think so, but one of these days she will. I'm sure of it. Okay, the next one I have is um, kind of special to me because I actually went to Folio Society's store in London when I was in London. I hunted it down. I didn't get to do a lot of the things on the list that I planned to do when we were there, but I did do this. And I went to their store and it was <laughs> glorious and I just wanted to spend like my whole day in it. And I came specifically for this copy. And this of course is the box. And this is the inside. Isn't it pretty? I love it. It's got some really pretty art in it. Obviously I've not read this copy. And even the pages on this are like really nice quality, like textured even. So yeah, Folio Society, awesome. And I love, love how these go together. If I can get it back in. There we go. <laughs> anyway, I love how these go together. Then we have one of my favorites and one I know I have read this version. It is leather bound, Barnes and Noble. My sister actually got me or had planned to get me the paperback version of this because she didn't know, or the 
the other whatever it is cloth bound version of this because she didn't know I had the hard the nice leather one so now she has that copy <laughs> um here's the spine it is also beautiful I I love these because they're done by one of my favorite letterers and that's awesome and I just think it's really impressive because that's what I wanted to do um, before I realized that I could do nerdy posts, it was like a dream of mine to design book covers. Now I think it's just kind of probably too much of a pain in the ass, but maybe it wouldn't be. I don't know. It's not like if anybody actually saw me designing for nerdy posts, they'd be like, that's too much of a pain in the ass. So who knows? But amazing in paper. I, it has like a green color on the pages, which I also love. I read this. December 2011. One of my favorites. And then this copy. I don't know who gave me this copy. It was either Michelle or Andy, I think. I, I love the binding on this one. Again, leather bound, golden red, and paper's pretty. Haven't read this version yet. I think I had actually planned to, and then I didn't pull the trigger on it, and I went with a different one. I have a lot of options, so it's kind of hard. Um, but it's so pretty, and I don't even remember who gave me this one. So sorry, whoever did. I'm not ungrateful. I just am forgetful. Okay, and then we have a little um, Pride and Prejudice, Mr. Darcy, magnetic bookmark from Holly Vander's wand and it's adorable and kind of fun and will work for some of them that like it would work when I read this one has the same kind of color scheme going on because I do still like to match my magnetic bookmarks when I can I I have from the in this in the wick of time Jane Austen's writing desk was from my sister for Christmas and I I haven't opened it in a while. I think it's fused shut. Oh, there we go. Mm, that was really good. I <laughs> uh, probably should burn these candles sometime instead of just using them as decoration. But it smells really good. I don't know what the scent is. It doesn't say. And I suck at figuring out what scent some people use, but I do like it. So, there's that. Um, <laughs> I have a first edition tea. Co tin. I love this tea. It is so good. It's one of my favorites. And uh, <laughs> Maddie keeps using it to put all of my tiny Funkos in. So it, a lot of them smell like this tea, which is fine because it smells really, really good. Then I also have this tea, which is Pride and Peppermint. And look at this tea tin. Now this is the one I was telling you about that had that went with the Kickstarter with the uh, Darcy necklace. Um, this is amazing. I, you need to see these details. It's so beautiful. And it really should be like a real book. Like I wish somebody would produce these designs. And inside are bookmarks that have Lydia Bennett on them. It's part of their Kickstarter. And um, Pride and Peppermint, which I have yet to open. I need to because I remember tasting it when they, they had asked a few people who like Pride and Prejudice on Instagram if they could send samples and have you taste them. At that point I was not quite into tea and, and was very good at like knowing what I liked, but I liked it. So I think now I'd probably like it more. I just keep forgetting that I actually have tea in here. So um, I should probably put this in my tea cabinet downstairs instead of in this tin. And use it. Um, then we have from there, if I can move this here. The next is The Secret Diary of Lizzie Bennet. I loved this show. And so when I saw that they, they had this book, I of course got it because um, I, I almost love the show as much as I love this book. So that's, that's awesome. I actually probably do. I've watched it so many times. I've forced it on so many people. Uh, my sister can, to it, can attest to it. My mom can attest to it. I'm pretty sure Michelle can attest to it too. I, I'm like, you have to watch it. It's amazing. So 
Everybody go watch this, especially if you like Pride and Prejudice. I have a playlist on my uh, on my YouTube channel, actually. I think it's this channel that I created that has them all on there so that you could find them easier. Um, I'll have to check. Then we have, okay, this is from, somebody, somebody gave this to me, I think. I don't even remember owning this one. It must have been one my sister got me, maybe. It's, I have no idea what language it's in. At all. Oh! I know. Okay, it's Brazilian. My friend Carol sent me this. I'm almost positive. <laughs> Wow, I can't believe I forgot about that. It's really, really pretty and I like it. So thank you, Carol. I'm sorry I forgot about that one. Um, the last three are also in different languages. This one I think Carol also sent to me. I remember now we had this whole conversation about it. Very pretty, very subtle. I mean, except for the red in the middle, but I just mean the design. Obviously I'll never write, read these because I don't, speak any of these languages, but it's really fun to have international versions of books. I, I do that with my Harry Potter books and I love having copies for Pride and Prejudice as well. Um, this one, my sister got me. It is from Italy, I think. I could be wrong. No, maybe this one is. Okay, I'm gonna show you the title. This one might be French. I can't remember which one's the French one and which one is the Italian one. So those could be backward. Either way, those are the international ones and I like them a lot. And that is the end of my collection for now. Um, of books anyway. I also have this Pride and Prejudice tote bag and it's the same design as this zipper pouch which both of them are from out of print and then I also have a story arts headband that's Pride and Prejudice and story arts scarf which is Pride and Prejudice so that is actually everything I own that is Pride and Prejudice related. I would love 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 to get some Pride and Prejudice Funkos. Not the Pride and Prejudice and zombie version, but like somebody custom make me the the two because that, that would be amazing to, to include because I like Funkos a lot. I don't know, I don't know if you can tell. I don't know if you can tell. So yeah, that would be, that would be amazing. I would love to be able to have some custom Lizzie and Darcy Funkos to put on the shop. I think that would look really cool on it. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this and maybe got some ideas for books that you would like if you collect them as well. And I hope you have a lovely weekend and I'll see you on Tuesday. Assuming that nothing goes wrong and I actually get everything filmed and <laughs> edited on time. We'll see. Till then. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later.